Hey guys, Chris from Provo Beast Audio Installation, and in today's video, we're going to be replacing the factory radio in this 2012 Hyundai Accent. Now, in this install, we're going to show you how to remove this factory radio. We'll head over to the bench, show you the parts that we're going to need, including the radio, wiring harness, and dash kit. Then we're going to come back here and get everything reinstalled. Let's get started. Okay, so the first thing that we need to do is get the factory radio on out. Now it is a standard doubled in size. Um, we do have a dash kit to accommodate an aftermarket in its place. It's pretty straightforward and simple. Um, this bezel is just held on with clips. And then there's two screws on each side, so four in total. Phillips screws holding the factory radio in place. Now I have a vinyl panel tool and a Phillips driver that we're going to use to remove this radio. It's always a good idea before you get started to remove the CD out of the factory radio because once the radio has been removed, it's extremely difficult to do so later on. So with our panel tool, I'm going to kind of find a corner to get in there to start working this panel on free. Alright, it's really tight, but take your time, it should pop on out, all just held on with clips there. Now down below we do have the passenger airbag light there, so we really, if we can avoid it, let's not disconnect this. If we need to disconnect this, let's remove the negative off the battery. We just don't want to uh, produce the light here on the dash that most likely would have to be cleared by the dealer. Now once that's out, you'll see the four screws on each side, go ahead and remove those. With those four screws removed, go ahead and grab your radio and give it a good tug. Just come on out. Now as you pull this on out, you're going to have a couple of harnesses to disconnect. You got your AM FM antenna. You got your XM antenna here as well. And then your main harnesses. Okay, with those on out, the radio is free. Let's head over to the bench and show you the parts that we're going to need for our install. All right, here we are at the bench. Now the parts that we're gonna need for our Hyundai today, first and foremost is the radio that we've chosen to go with. Now this is the JVC KW-M730BT. Uh, features both Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Now to accommodate this standard size doubled in radio, we're gonna need a dash kit. This is, this vehicle calls for the Metra 99-7347B. This accommodates both a double or single den radio. So depending on what you're installing, it should work for your application. For the wiring harness side, we are going with this Amp Pro 4. This is the RP4.2-HY11. Now this will actually accommodate everything from the factory, both amplified systems or not. So this will also fit um, just about every single trim level accent out there. Now, additionally, this will also retain the factory auxin USB as it does state in the instructions of the pack. We shouldn't need an antenna adapter or anything else for this install here today. So what we're going to do at this point is we're going to get this box hole pulled apart to grab our wiring harness adapter. This will also retain our steering wheel volume controls, which is awesome. We're going to grab the harness that comes with our new radio. We're going to prep our harness by stripping both ends and matching color for color. And today we're going to be using solder and heat shrink. Let's get started. All right, so we've done some preparation with our wiring harnesses here. This end plugs into the radio. This end plugs into the vehicle. Now we're going to be matching up essentially color for color. And we'll validate to make sure it is certainly color for color by going off the wiring diagram there listed in our pack instructions. Now at this point of time, we've prepped the wiring by stripping both ends. We've also put heat shrink on one end, so when those soldered connections cool, we can move those heat shrink tubes up and over those connections and we'll shrink them down with the heat gun. So at this point of time, let's start marrying up color for color. Right, so we finished soldering everything up color for color here and essentially now with our connection school we're going to move this heat shrink up and over those connections here just like so and we're going to shrink them down with the heat gun and it really actually according to our instructions here it was pretty much color for color um, 
there is not a lot of deviance from generally what's expected in the aftermarket industry. The ones that we didn't use, we didn't require speed vehicle speed sense, the pink. Our radio doesn't support it, so we capped it off. And there is a programmable switched uh, 12 volts, which is red, white. Um, we're not going to use it in our application here today, so we capped that off as well. Um, but everything else is color for color here. We left an extra red off in case we wanted to power like a backup camera because this does 10 amps on our accessory circuit, which is perfect. So we left that off there. And for a remote turn on wire, we added just an extra little uh, blue white off as well in case we add an amplifier down the road. Like I said, everything else is color for color. So what we're going to do at this point in time is we're going to wrap our harness in some tested tape just to protect the wiring a little bit more in the dash and give it more of a professional look. So as we were taping this up, we're starting to organize what wire will go where just so we have the nice even lengths. This does have a harness for the factory backup camera, which we don't have. We don't have a factory camera. So we're actually going to cut this harness out just to reduce the amount of clutter back behind the radio. Um, but if you did have the backup camera, this would plug into the factory harness and run accordingly. Again, since we don't have that here, what we're going to do is we'll cut that off just a hair. Um, the center one is an expansion port, which we won't use. And this little guy is a conversion harness that'll go to a module that's not included in the box in order to convert the analog output to a digital one that the amplifier can read. Um, you can read up more about the SPDIF converter um, on PAC's website. We're not using it obviously today, so we'll just leave this on off. Everything else, we're going to continue wrapping right, so up. So we finished prepping our harness here. These ends plug into the vehicle. This end plugs into the radio. This also has the auction USB. And we also have our OBD2 connections. This is important to hook up in case you want like the reverse gear trigger wire, uh, vehicle speed sense, parking brake, everything that goes through generally the CAN bus system of the vehicle. You'll need to pull it from the OBD2 port. Now to hook that up, we're going to show you a little bit later on how we're going to do that. But if we flip this around in the instructions itself, it does talk about where to tap into that on both this pin and that pin. And uh, that allows you to really get everything set up. Now before you install this in the vehicle, you'll also have to go through and set the dip switch configuration based on the radio that you're installing. So since we're doing a JVC today, we need to set number two dip switch to on. Talks about connecting the white and the red white wire to the OBD2 port wiring. Um, steering wheel control, since we're doing a JVC, we didn't know, need the 3.5 millimeter plug. And instead, what we'll be using in its place is the blue yellow wire that was supplied by our harness. And you can reassign your steering wheel controls later on in the instructions if you don't like how the factory one is set up. Next thing we need to do is grab our dash kit to get it mounted on the radio. All right, so what we've done here is we've got the side brackets on the radio. Um, this, because it doesn't actually bolt into the dash kit, uh, take the Phillips screwdriver that you're gonna use um, with you into the car and you may have to adjust the brackets in and out just so this clearance between the front bezel and the actual dash bezel there's no gap there, so you can't see into the dash. So you may have to pull it in and out a couple of times to get that adjustment just right. So we've done that, we've got this all adjusted. The actual plastic piece that goes up and around the radio clips into the back of the dash, it's still in the car. So that's why we don't have it here on the bench, but we'll show you what that looks like once we get to installing the radio itself. So at this point of time, let's grab our radio and our assembled wiring harness. Let's head to the car to start getting everything installed. Now our harness, depending on which harness you use, you may have to tap into the data part, the OBD2 port um, up underneath the dash. And it's easy to get to, to pull down, to tap, make those connections. Um, this panel, there's one screw on this side, one screw on this side, and then you take off the side panel that's held on with screws. And then this just pops down. Um, you can see it's just the rest of it's held on with clips here. We popped our data port out. And pin six and pin 14 are the two pins that we need to tap into. Pin six is uh, here at the bottom and pin 14 is right above it. And we'll show you what that looks like from the instructions. Pin six is this green wire and then pin 14 is this orange wire. What we did is we just stripped those wires back here. We didn't break those connections. We didn't want to break them. We just exposed the copper 
pulled the shielding back and we soldered our wire onto it. Now, our green wire goes to the white red and our orange wire goes to the white black. We got those soldered up, we taped them up so they're all good to go. And that's it, that's what we tap into, pin six and pin 14. And then now what we can do is just get this reinstalled back into our main spot, just like so, and reassembled up underneath the dash. All right, so we're back here in the vehicle. Now you saw us hook up our OBD2 port cable. So that's all done and ready to go. This is just fished it up underneath the dash and made those two connections at that port. So that's done. Next thing we can do at this point of time is hook up our main harnesses here. They're keyed differently, so they only go one way. Now at this point, this is done and ready to go. We've already set our dip switch and everything like that. Now we can go ahead and start connecting it to our radio. All right, so let's go ahead and double check everything is working properly. Let's get this thing booted up. Um, especially, let's check the steering wheel volume controls, and they do look like they're working great. So let's reinstall the four Phillips screws up and around the new radio. Once those are in, let's reinstall the factory dash bezel by snapping it back into place, ensuring that everything is lining up correctly. Just give it a firm push. Now this is the dash bezel adapter that we didn't show you on the bench, but we installed it in this factory bezel. It just essentially snaps into place and is a trim ring up and around the new radio. Well, that's about it for this install. If you have any questions on what we did here, go ahead and post a comment below. If you wanna see how we did a backup camera on this Hyundai Accent, check that video on out. We'll walk you through step-by-step -step on how to integrate an aftermarket camera to this aftermarket radio. Thanks again for watching. Be sure to hit the like button if you like what you saw. And don't forget to subscribe and post great content on the channel all the time. And we'll see you in the next video.